is 90% of the companies we help are small and medium-sized enterprises. These are a few of the high-profile ones, though. Uh, Walmart put their RHQ in Hong Kong. Walmart have a massive office in Shenzhen buying from China, but they moved their senior executive team from the United States to Hong Kong. It's only about 10 or 12 people, but 10 or 12 C-level executives to make decisions for the whole of Asia. In 10 years, we've helped 2,000 companies. Our 2,000th company was a, a British design consultant that has just moved to Hong Kong. They design, they do corporate design for Virgin and various airlines. Um, they've got uh, about 150 people in London. They aim to have the same number of people in Hong Kong within five years. And the thing that really makes us get out of bed each morning is not attracting more money to Hong Kong. We all know Hong Kong's are wash with liquidity. We've got loads of funds here. We're not an economy that needs foreign uh, currency. The thing that really drives us is jobs. All right? So we're very proud that over the past 10 years, the companies that we've brought in have employed directly 25,000. Well, global cities, Hong Kong is up there. All right? There's a lot of people that say Hong Kong isn't a world city. Um, but there have been a number of studies that do searches on the internet, how many times city names crop up in various areas. And Hong Kong, we believe, is one of the global cities. We're just going to make sure it stays there. All right? So it's right up there, number five behind London, New York, Paris, and Tokyo. And the first thing I'll show is this picture of all our judges dressed up in their uh, finery to emphasize the point. All right, that our legal system is very unique in our, in our region, that Hong Kong is one of the few places in East Asia where an individual, an old age pensioner, can take the government to court and win. And it does happen, although we don't encourage it, as you know, including my predecessor who took the government to court and won. Um, so, Independent judiciary is incredibly important. One country, two systems is incredibly important. It must be preserved uh, as an advantage in terms of attracting foreign companies, but also in attracting mainland companies. They also value this. But despite the fact that we have this high degree of autonomy, our own currency, our own system of government, our own legal system, our own immigration policy, our great SAR passports that I wish I had, um, at the same time, we're part of China, part of the world's fastest growing major economy, part of the world's second largest economy. So we do have the best of both worlds. We are very centrally located. And this is important for access to the mainland, but equally important for access to the other business cities in our region. Kuala Lumpur, Vietnam, Singapore, you name it are accessible within two or three hours flying time. And if you have only one base in our region, then you know you can cover these cities. You could fly up to Shanghai one night, spend a day in Shanghai, fly back that night. If you're based in Singapore and you want to go to Beijing, that's a whole day flight. So if you're only going for a couple of meetings, you waste a whole day flying there, you waste a whole day flying back. And if you're a regional hub, or an entrepreneur that doesn't have huge amounts of staff in the region, you need to. Uh, this is the Forbes Tax Misery Index. And this, for this index, it's good to be at the bottom. And we're right down here. Okay? As you all know, our taxes are low and simple and very straightforward. But it's also interesting to see, and there's no surprises that France is at the top, but China is number two. People don't realize from outside of our region that China is a high tax economy. It's not just the levels of tax. There are many sources of income in the mainland that are taxed at quite a high rate. And so to access and benefit from the opportunities in China, put your treasury, your command and control functions in. Who is corporate tax? This is salaries tax. This is Social Security and some other taxes that we don't have. All right? Hong Kong, as you all know, 16.5% corporate tax. Salaries tax, 
15%. Only less than 2% of our working population pay tax at 15%. Congratulations if you're one of them. 60% don't pay any salaries tax because the allowances are quite high. NPF, 5%, 5%, cap to $1,000. Very tiny area. We all know how small the PRD is in global terms. It's about a little bit smaller than Austria, but the PRD, the greater power of Delta, has, more, has 55 million people. It is a huge city. And it started off as a very effective manufacturing basin. Now it offers tremendous potential as a great market because these people have more per capita income than virtually any other part of mainland China in a very concentrated area. Huge opportunity for Hong Kong, and that's why we're spending all this money on improving our connectivity with Shenzhen, with Zhuhai, with Macau, and the rest of the GPRB. Visitor arrivals. Now, I show this to foreigners because this presents an opportunity. As you all know, after SARS, we relaxed the visa requirements for mainland visitors to come into Hong Kong. I remember back in 1997 when people were talking about uh, allowing mainlanders to visit Hong Kong, and I remember how disparaging people were. They would say, well, why do we want to bring all the mainlanders into Hong Kong? They'll bring their own bien dung with them, they'll just go and see all the free sites, they'll stay in Shenzhen, they're not going to spend any money. But of course, this is completely false. Mainlanders spend more per head than visitors from Australia, from Japan, from Europe, and so on. And the good news is the numbers are going up. This, we had nearly 18 million visitors from mainland China last year. This year, way more. So 30 million visitor arrivals this year, well over 35. And the good news is these guys all come to shop. So we've got more Gucci shops, and you all know this, First square kilometer than you'll see in Milan. More Tiffany's than you'll see in New York. The second biggest Louis Vuitton outside of Paris, what used to be in Canton Road. And it's primarily because of these visitors that are coming to spend big bucks in Hong Kong. Look at the number of jewelry shops, cosmetic shops. But this presents an opportunity for foreign entrepreneurs who want to test their products with an affluent middle class mainland and Hong Kong consumer. Not just individuals, mainland companies are coming to Hong Kong. If we go back, this is only until 2000, but if we go back to 1997, if we look at the composition of our stock market, it was less than 8% of our market capitalization came from the mainland companies on the board. Today, it's actually about 60%. A huge jump in about 13 years. Uh, and the mainland companies, of course, are not just listing, they're raising capital through the banks. They need service providers, they need, a, they need law firms, they need accounting firms, they need consulting firms that can help them to go international. And this also presents tremendous opportunities for foreign and international firms to provide those services, design services. 